Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Tonight on Our News, the mother hit by a vehicle while holding her baby speaks out. A devastated family mourns the man murdered on Calpen Road last week. Why the Labor Department will clamp down on some work permits and meet the standout student who scored 13 A's in the BGCSE exams. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, a mother of three who was run over by a vehicle during a domestic dispute caught on camera in November is speaking out tonight. Weeks after she was released from hospital, Patrick Curry needs your help paying for crucial but expensive spinal surgery. She sat down with Vonique too during the first part of her series, When Love Hurts. This viral video capturing the moment Petra Curry was hit by a car while holding her baby on Key West Street last November is hard to forget. However, it's an incident the 33-year-old doesn't remember. You don't even remember anything from yesterday? I saw the video after I came out the hospital and I was in hospital for like six months. Curry was released from hospital on Christmas Eve. Six weeks earlier, police say shortly after a domestic dispute between the young woman and a man, the driver of her vehicle came through Key West Street and ran her over before he hit another vehicle. According to police, he attempted to leave the scene but was stopped by residents. When Curry came to in hospital, she says she had no idea who she was, where she was, or what had happened to her. I can't even remember my own name at one point. I couldn't remember anything at all. I was in the ICU about a week. And what's the first thing you remember waking up in the hospital? Like, what's the first thought that entered when your When I mind? actually came to the hospital, I wake up to a phone call. My niece called me and asked me, how I doing? I said, I just get there by all right. She said, you know, you in the hospital? I said, no, what happened? She said, you had an accident. What you mean, you don't know what happened? I didn't know anything. And then after a while, I started to feel pain in my leg. That's when I found I had surgery on my left leg. I had to get a steel and a plate and shoes in my left leg. The vehicle in question crashed into this truck owned by Curry's brother, then flipped over. However, her brother was more concerned about her baby daughter, whom he rushed to pick up from the street. The past three months haven't been easy for the young entrepreneur. It was crazy because I had the, the better vehicle than everything. For me. I could walk, I was down the pumpers, I couldn't go to the bathroom. I didn't even, at one point, I didn't even know when I needed to use the restroom. But her road to recovery is far from over. Her pain is evident as Curry attempts to walk. She also wears a brace around her midsection. Doctors have informed her she will need surgery on her spine as soon as possible. My spine is dislocated. A piece of my spine is crushed. I need to go in surgery for my spine. They need to put a plate and some screws into my spine. But the problem is she can't afford it. The mother of two girls and one boy supported herself and her children by selling children's clothing, but she is in no condition to work, impacting her business. Family members also fear that without financial help, Curry's oldest daughter, who has been described as very gifted, may not be able to remain in private school. Surgery for the spine is $20,000. And how soon do doctors say you need to have the surgery? They want to do the surgery as soon as I get the funds. They want to do the surgery before I even got discharged to the hospital. So because they don't want the spine to get any worse. They don't want it to move over the place. That's the purpose of the brace. And then for me to sit up, I have to get a brace. Curry has been warned that without the crucial procedure, her spine could get worse and she may become paralyzed. I was fine less than five, less than what, three minutes or five minutes, I lost everything. It's like starting all over again. To see my kids cry and they want something, I gotta wait for somebody to have to deal with them. It's a lot. And once you get the funds you need, you look to book that surgery right away. Right away, yes, ma'am. As she recovers, Curry often asks herself one question. I'm more angry at it because the question still is, what have I done to reserve that? And my main concern was my baby. If they didn't remove out my arms when I said remove it, and I saw the video, she wouldn't have survived the accident. As a mother. Which is his child. 
Police have described the matter as a domestic incident. It came amid heightened national concern over domestic violence. It is something she wants to educate her nine-year-old son and two daughters ages six and one about. Especially for my son, it's not okay to hit anybody. It's not okay to abuse and I want my daughters to know in any situation, it's always okay to come home. Never stay somewhere you're not comfortable. Curry also had these words for anyone who may be in a toxic relationship. It's not okay to stay. If it's red flags, leave early before it gets worse or it could get worse. Because I had to learn how to walk all over again. I still could barely, I still can't walk like that. I still have the whole one. If you'd like to assist Curry and her children, you can reach her at 805-5467 or deposit funds to any of her bank accounts at Royal Bank, CIBC First Caribbean, or Bank of the Bahamas. Reporting for our news, I'm Vwani Toon. A tearful sister says her life will never be the same after her brother was shot and killed off Cowpen Road over the weekend. Sharika Johnson has the details. At age 26, Rashad Stubbs is the country's latest murder victim. Stubbs, a construction worker, was found dead on Friday at 1 a.m. outside his home off Calpin Road West. He had a gunshot wound to the chest. His sister, Rache Bain, said her brother didn't deserve to die. You smile. You have the most straightest teeth. Brightest smile. Always happy. My brother didn't deserve this. He didn't deserve to die. Stubbs is the fourth child in the family and is the second brother killed within a year. This is just the worst feeling ever. I feel like it never. It's going to never stop. The pain is never going to stop. I am never going to heal. I'm never going to be okay. I'll try to push through every day, but... It's just the worst. The young man's death has added to the pain the family feels as they struggle to come to terms with this latest tragedy. Payne says her brother has since moved out of the home as she tries to cope with the loss of another child to senseless violence. I never laughed. Imagine losing one. Everything was supposed to be okay. Police say they are investigating the circumstances surrounding his death. Stubbs leaves behind a daughter. For our news, I'm Sharika Johnson. Meanwhile, the family of a man who was shot and killed by three off-duty police officers held a candlelight vigil in his memory last evening. The 31-year-old man's family says there are still many unanswered questions as they seek the truth about what transpired during the incident. Jared Higgs has the story. My family does not sleep. And I say these things because I want people to understand the pain that we are going through as a family and the pain that many are going through. Azario Major's family continuing to advocate for justice in his death a little over six weeks ago after he was shot and killed by three off-duty police officers outside a bar on Fire Trail Road. This case was extremely brutal. I know that I am never going to forget the sacrifice that I made to look at my brother's dead body, and I hope that you guys do not make that sacrifice in vain. On December 26, 2021, at around 8 p.m., police say Major was acting disorderly and left the bar twice before returning with a gun. According to his family, he was shot three times in the head and more than 15 times about the body. They say he had to be identified by a tattoo on his neck bearing his sister's name. His body was shattered. I am probably going to die remembering the way that his body looked. The heartbroken woman and Major's father, Frederick Major, appeal to members of the public to support their cause. They say they will begin advocating for other families whose loved ones have been killed by police. I employ all Bahamians to join us and speak. Hashtag justice for Azario. Hashtag we want to see the footage. They have three sets of footage and they have not shown us any proof that my brother drew any type of weapon. The real challenge for many of us is that we are afraid to speak and to do so from a position of principle. Other loved ones remembered Major fondly and also questioned government's commitment to addressing concerns over police use of force. Azario was a jewel, you know? His laughter was contagious. And if he felt as if he offended you or did you wrong, by the end of the day, he was coming to make amends. Green Monroe, where's thou? 
Where's Zal Wayne Monroe? I don't understand. Major's family has retained the services of attorney Ramona Farkasen Seymour. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. In other news, as the economy continues to rebound and job opportunities increase, Labour Director Robert Farquharson is vowing that no foreigner should get a work permit where there are qualified Bahamians to fill that position. Farquharson says it's a rule that's being strictly enforced and they will be clamping down on the granting of work permits. Jasmine Brown reports. Farquharson says as the economy continues to reopen, more jobs are becoming available and labor officials are doing all they can to ensure Bahamians get first pick. The government's Bahamianization policy says that Bahamians must be first. Farquharson backing up comments made by Labor Minister Keith Bell last week. Section 86 of the Industrial Relations Act provides that the Ministry of Labor is to issue a certificate evidencing the availability or non-availability of a Bahamian suitable for employment in a position for which an application is being made by an employer to be filled by a non-Bahamian. Farquharson says the government approves roughly 30,000 work permits each year most of which are for people working as handymen, maids, and on farms. Farquharson warning that new permits will not be granted if a Bahamian is qualified and available. The majority of um, jobs that are uh, coming available, we are strictly enforcing um, the provisions of Section 86 of the, of the of the industrial design. The labor director says he is also working closely with the director of immigration to advise current work permit holders who are in positions that Bahamians are now qualified to fill that they may not get new permits. Work permit holders who are in place, we say, you know, since you were employed, we now have six, seven payments qualified. So we need you to understand this may be your last work permit application. The employer needs to know that we now have qualified payments to fill this vacancy. And, and hopefully that will reduce the level of unemployment here in the Bahamas. Farquharson also encouraged skilled Bahamians seeking jobs to register with the Department of Labor so that the information is on hand when applications are made. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, perfect conditions for a date night. Meteorologist Greg Thompson joins us with the latest. Good evening, Greg. Thanks, Christina. Welcome, everybody, for our first look at weather brought to you tonight by Ports International trusted medical supplies for a better quality of life. Very cool conditions outside our studios, the breeze blowing out there making it feel a lot cooler. Temperatures at the 70 degree mark with some patchy clouds outside, those winds are really whipping out there at the north, northeast at 70 miles per hour with some high gusts and your feels like temperature very cool 65 degrees. Satellite view, that front boundary that moved into the northwest Bahamas now into the central Bahamas weakening as it sags towards the south expected to stall across the southeast Bahamas by tomorrow. We expect uh, some of those clouds to dissipate but behind that a very nice influx of some cooler air with that high pressure system dominating windy conditions expected tonight through tomorrow for your Valentine's Day. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come, food price increases affecting a local nonprofit. Plus, how a shooting star landed 13 A's in national exams. Find out more after this. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID 19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID 19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Rising grocery store prices placing a further burden on local nonprofit organizations, including Great Commission Ministries, which feeds hundreds of people in need each week. Berthney McDermott reports. Great Commission Ministries is reporting a 20% increase in expenses due to the escalating rise in grocery store prices, according to senior pastor Bishop Walter Hanchel. He said it has affected them as they seek to stock the food bank. It seems as though the cost of jumped up about 20 Great Commission Ministries is reporting a 20% increase in expenses due to the escalating rise in grocery store prices, according to senior pastor Bishop Walter Hanchel. He said it has affected them as they seek to stock the food bank. It seems as though the costs have jumped up about 20%. That's how it feels to us. And we feel it, so I could imagine how the, the average Bahamian feels, and particularly the poor Bahamians. 
Last week, local businesses like Super Value and Lowe's Wholesale warned of a rise in prices. Hanschel said the spike in food prices has made their work a bit difficult. We get less for the same amount of money, which has put a great strain on us. He called for more funds to be allocated to assist those in need. And I thank God for, for the Department of Social Services and Urban Development for all that they do. I thank God for the different agencies that are working to help um, re bring relief to the poor and the suffering. But we need to inject some more money into um, this area because we have too many Bahamians really that are, that are suffering. Addressing reporters as GCM accepted a donation from the Senate, Bamsey President Aresia Hepburn also weighed in. She said it's important for Bahamians to know where to shop to get the best prices. This is a $20 Bamsey box. So as you can see, this box could probably last a, a family of four for at least a week, two weeks in advance. I'm not in advance, two weeks uh, time. So what we have to do is start to encourage our people to know where to shop as well. Bishop Angel is appealing to anyone who can assist to make a generous donation to the Great Commission Ministries. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. The top BGCSE student led the country with 13 A's in the 2021 exams. The 16-year-old 12th grader at Queen's College sat the exams in grade 11 and took five extra classes in order to accomplish the feat. Jared Higgs reports. 16-year-old Christopher Knowles became the first male student at QC to achieve 13 A's when he pulled off the incredible milestone during last year's exams. I was inspired by one of my friends and as well as someone else from last year, two girls who had also achieved the same goal. Knowles scored A's in the three sciences as well as combined science, English language, math, office procedures, Spanish, graphical communications, religion, geography, food nutrition, and keyboarding where he won a subject prize. I had nine, well, eight inside school and then did the five by myself. The 16-year-old says cutting out his social media use was key to his success. He would hand off his devices to his mother every evening to ensure there were no distracting notifications. Say if your friends message you, you're always going to answer them. And so that's obviously a big distraction for everyone and for a lot of students. So... Taking time away from your phone or social media is a big help, but also having someone there who will keep you on the right track is also really important. Our News interviewed Knowles at his parents' medical practice, or as he describes it, his future practice. Knowles has applied to dozens of colleges in the U.S. and in the Caribbean, and he plans to expand his applications to the U.K. You're here. This is what I want to do. I want to become a cosmetic dermatologist. Knowles is also a business owner, selling teas and iced teas, and also the author of several Bahamian-themed books. He plays golf as well for fun and is looking forward to university, which will likely be in the Caribbean. He had this message for any student with big goals. You can do anything. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Higgs. Thanks, Jared. When Our News returns, creating a beautiful bouquet for that special someone. And a Super Bowl halftime show to remember, Marcellus has the sports highlights when Our News returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news. Welcome back. It's the biggest day for the floral industry as buses filled with flowers make special deliveries. Our Megan Shepherd stopped by the greenhouse to find out what goes into creating a beautiful bouquet. We're offering red rose arrangements, jewelry boxes, gourmet gift crates, that sort of thing. Um, we also like to encourage persons who may not have a significant other, because traditionally that's what is celebrated, to celebrate loved ones. Did you know that the color of a rose can symbolize various messages and forms of affection? Traditionally, a red rose says, I love you. 
A pink rose expresses appreciation, and an orange rose says, I want you in my life. Creative director at the greenhouse, Shivante Lockhart says, they have an array of roses and other flowers to spread love to the special person in your life. Most popularly, we have red roses, of course, that symbolize love. And then for daughters, for your daughter or your mom, you would do the hot pinks or the soft pinks. Um, lilies are also popular as well. Tulips. She admits they were concerned about how the pandemic would impact sales, but... Sales have been pretty good despite the pandemic. Um, people have always been looking for, you know, expressions of love, especially during this time. You always want to grab hold of whatever joy we can get. And flowers has always been a, a big seller for us. Um, so we're, we're excited. We're excited. We're grateful. Sales have been really, really good. And as for what sets the greenhouse apart from traditional arrangements? We always try to do a little something different than the regular, you know, glass where some persons may come in and request that traditional look. But we always try to do something a little different. This year we're offering jewelry boxes with flowers and a secret compartment. This is a flower box with a secret compartment that will house all of your sweet treats. So we try to do something a little different. Um, we have lots of different options on our website and on our Instagram pages as well. We have love cases, that sort of thing. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. The latest on Buddy Heald as he joins the Indiana Pacers. Meanwhile, the LA Rams are your Super Bowl champions. Marcellus Hall has the latest tonight in sports. Thanks, Christina. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Before we get to Super Bowl, uh, and I got to say once again, thanks to Atlantis for, for hooking up all the members of the sports media with a great Super Bowl party yesterday over at uh, Seaglass. Appreciate you guys very much. Before we get to that, though, we got to get to, of course, Buddy Heal, this guy behind me. New uniform, same style of play. Buddy Heal now in his new team, the Indiana Pacers. They were in action last night. He's hoping for a change of scenery, meaning more wins. Turns out that didn't quite go as planned, but the rest of the season still ahead. Let's take a look. Grand Bahama native Buddy Heal still getting used to playing in his new digs in Indiana. Pace is taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves last night. Buddy on the floor. And uh, he put up some pretty solid numbers. Actually, starting in this game, played 39 minutes, 13 points, 8 rebounds, and 1 assist in the ball game. Uh, bad news, though, they do get the loss. 129 to 120 ends up being the final score. If you're wondering when Buddy and the Pacers play again, that'll come your way on Tuesday when they take on the Milwaukee Bucks. On to the NFL, where it was Super Bowl time once again. Super Bowl 56 yesterday evening, and a good game between the LA Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals. Guys, this one, a pretty exciting ball game, went right down to the wire. Rams would jump out on top early, but the Bengals would respond. Second half, it was the Bengals with the lead, Rams with a late touchdown, Cooper Cup in the end zone. He gets to go ahead score. Bengals unable to respond as Aaron Donald comes up with the big sack to clinch the ball game. And the LA Rams are your Super Bowl champions, 23 to 20, ends up being your final score. And congratulations are in order for our longtime Rams fan, Edward Roma. Hey, you finally got the big one, buddy. Congratulations, enjoy it, and all the other Rams fans out there as well. Job well done, well deserved. You are your Super Bowl champion. That's your check on sports. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Marcellus. Ahead on our news, Greg is back with our extended forecast. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back to our news. A partly cloudy start to the week before sunny conditions roll in. Greg is back with our extended forecast. Hi, Greg. Thanks again, Christina. Welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather on this Valentine's Day. And let me wish my parents happy anniversary. They celebrated that yesterday. 61 years from your children and your grandchildren. Happy anniversary. 
Satellite view, that frontal boundary that moves through the northwest Bahamas now into the central Bahamas with some patchy clouds and some isolated showers along that boundary. That frontal boundary will continue to sink into the southeast Bahamas tonight through tomorrow and continue to weaken, but behind that, a very strong high pressure system building across the area, generating some hazardous boating and beaching conditions over the next couple of days. So if you plan on any of those activities, it will be a challenge, but behind, cooler temperatures expected for at least a day or two before we start to warm up by the middle of the week and those uh, temperatures at night should be very comfortable. Speaking of our beaching and boating forecast for the Northwest and Central Bahamas, an advisory post will be asking you boaters if you really don't have to be out there, stay on shore. Northeast to east winds at 20 to 25 knots, those winds will gust higher. Seas running five to seven feet near shore, but up to 10 feet offshore along mostly those Atlantic exposed shorelines. Tide is presently high, will be low at 12.33 in the morning. For the Southeast Bahamas, a caution flag posted for you guys down there. Northeast to east winds at 15 to 20 knots. Seas very rough four to seven feet over the open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast for the next seven days. That's a look at our weather. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Greg, and thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.